Welcome back to the live demo portion of Virtual Administrator's webcast, Kaseya for Techs. At this point, I'm going to assume that your boss or Kaseya administrator has given you your login credentials and the URL that you need to log in. I want to begin by showing you how to navigate around in Kaseya. On the left hand side of the window, you will see a pane divided into three parts. The top part of the pane allows you to do things like set up and use bookmarks or add notes to your computer, but the most useful option is the question mark. This is the help button. Anytime you aren't sure about a function, simply click on the question mark and use the help file to guide you. This help file is the documentation for Kaseya. The second area shows the active module. To change to a different module, simply click anywhere in the frame and it will bring up a list of all the modules that are available to you. Remember, your list might be slightly different depending on what modules are in use at your company. When you click on a module, you will be presented with all the functions that correspond to that module. To select a function, simply select it from the left hand side and the the right hand pane will show all of the things that are available to you. Next we're going to talk about filters. Up at the top of the screen in the shaded area you're going to see three different filters that can be used in Kaseya. There's a filter called Machine ID, a filter called Machine Group, and another called a View. These filters can be used to segment your larger population of machines and focus attention on just a subset of machines. The filter you'll use most often is the machine group. When a client calls on the phone and says they're having a problem with their computer, the first thing you'll want to do is select the machine group and pick the customer. In your organization, you probably have a variety of different machine groups here. I just got one for this training exercise, so I'm going to select Network Depot HQ as my machine group. When I do that, it's going to pull all of the machines that are part of that group and only display those machines. This area here will tell you how many machines are selected as part of your filters. So I know I have a total of 31 machines in that group. Another view that you'll use is called Views, or a filter you'll use is called Views. When you click on the drop-down box, you're going to see that there are a number of different views already pre-configured for you. What you can do is select one of those. Let's say I want to see just the workstations. I would select the workstation view, and it will go through and it will redraw the screen, showing only the number of workstations. As you can see here, I have 21 workstations out of the 31 total that I had before. What if I want to see just laptops? I can scroll down the list and look for a, a view called, in this case, notebooks only, and it will show me that there's only two laptops in this group. So this is a wonderful way of basically segmenting out the machines that you want to work on. I may want to apply different settings to laptops than I do desktops and I want to apply different settings to servers versus the workstations. Next I want to just talk about the machine ID, the third filter. Now this is one that I don't use very often. Um, the times that I do use it are generally when I'm trying to focus attention on a particular uh, machine and it's somewhere in the middle of everything that I'm looking at. So let's say I wanted to work on this ND CPU front. What I can do is just copy and paste that information up top here and then hit apply and what you'll see is that it now shows me only that one machine notice our results are only one machine here so now even when I get into areas of Kaseya where I'm going to say select all and apply some settings it's only going to apply it to that one machine now you may find that you accidentally um, put it put a uh, some characters in here or you get to a, a combination of filters that is resulting in zero machines. If that happens, instead of trying to figure out what you've done wrong, just simply click this little reset button up here on the right hand side 
That's why it's there. Click it once and it's going to erase all the filters and it will show you all the machines that you have in your entire database. Now notice how more machines displayed on the screen. That's because I had the show button set at 10 before. That shows me only the first 10. When I do that, I now have four pages of machines. So if you don't see what you're looking for, it could be that the show is set very low. Now I'm showing 30, but remember I had 31 total, so that means I have one machine on that second page. And there it is. We like to keep this at 10 or 30 because it does improve the performance of the server as it's going out doing a query. It's, re it's returning less results in doing this, so it will improve performance by keeping that number low. Along the side of the machine ID, you'll see a series of icons. These icons are very useful in determining the current status of the machine. There are five different icons that we run into in everyday tech life. And luckily, all five of them are on this screen. To start, let's talk about the green icon. The green circle means that the machine is currently active and currently checking in to the Kaseya server. When you see the icon with the face on it, that means that a user is currently logged into that machine. The blue icon with the face means that the user is actively using their computer, while the yellow icon with the face means the user has been inactive for a period of at least 10 minutes. The gray circles or icons are machines that are not checking in to the K server. Now, if these are workstations, we generally don't worry about it too much, but if they were servers, then that would be a critical event because the server is not checking in and could possibly be down. You'll notice in that second to last column, last check-in time, it actually has the time when, this, when these machines last checked in. And you can see the gray ones, one hasn't checked in since February, but the other one just hasn't checked in since the 9th of July. There's one other icon at the top of the screen, and that is the orange square. These are machines that have technically never checked in and generally are always used as templates. Templates are used to store settings and we see them when we go and cr when we're creating deployment packages and de to deploy agents onto your servers or workstations. These templates become very useful. So the screen you see here is the agent menu, agent status. And this is my favorite screen. I love this screen for a number of reasons. First of all, I have all of the information that I need right here on the screen. We talked about the different icons so I can see what the status of how, you know, how the machines are doing. But I also have information about those machines. And that information is presented in a series of columns. Now these four columns, I mean, they're okay, but there's actually much more information that we can get. And when you're first set up as a user, you usually get defaulted to just a few columns. But I wanna show you how to customize this and put information on the screen that will help you. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this select columns button, and it's gonna bring up on the left-hand side all of the different um, pieces of information that are available inside Kaseya. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some things that I think are useful. We've already got the machine ID showing here. So I want to add, and we also have the current user, but I like the last logged in user. So we're going to go in there and we're going to try to find the last logged in user. There we go. We're going to add that to the list. And we're going to add the IP address of the machine. And we're going to add the domain. Now, by the way, you can do this in, in by just holding down the control key. So we're going to hit domain. Um, we're going to click the operating system, the operating system version, the default gateway. Release the control and click down here a little bit. And also want to know the RAM is sometimes useful. And the last couple of things are going to be the manufacturer, because I want to know what kind of computer they have. And I also want to know something called the chassis type. That's going to tell me if it's a laptop or a desktop. 
So I'm going to click add and I'm going to put all those things over here on the right. Now what we can do is we can kind of sort them a little bit. So I've got the machine ID, the current user, and then it's last check-in time. Well, guess what? I really don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle that down to the bottom. The last reboot time, I don't even want. I'm going to remove that. It's really just not that useful, and I can get it other places. Uh, we've got the IP address. We've got the domain. We've got the operating system, the operating system version. Uh, let's see. I like RAM. Let's move RAM up a little bit. And then we've got the, uh, you know what, default gateway. I don't really need what I really wanted, and I missed that, was the connection gateway. Uh, let's see if I can find that quickly here. There we go, connection gateway. I'm going to add that, move this to the end, and how about that? Let's go ahead and hit apply and see how that looks. So as you can see, what happened here is it redrew the screen with all of these new columns. And one of the things I found is the the last logged in or the current user is great, but remember if there's no user logged into the machine, that field is going to be blank. So what I can do from the last logged in user, I can actually see that Jay Bolger was the last one to log into this computer. And this will, you know, this is great when particularly if you don't name your machines after your users, but you know, Steven wanted me to work on his machine. And I have no idea what machine he was on, but luckily with last logged in user, I know that Steven was using the conference room computer. The IP address is useful, and by the way, you can sort on any of these columns. Just click on the top and it will, it will put them in, in um, numerical or alphabetical order for you. Uh, the domain work group, it'll come up in a second. There we go. The domain work group. Now this is very useful as well. It tells me the NetBIOS name of my domain. But more importantly, it tells me that what machines are domain controllers and what machines are simply domain members. So if I were to look at, say, the servers only, uh, you'd be able, to be able to see which machines are domain controllers and which machines are just domain members. And if you happen to have um, workstations like that's not a member of a domain, it's going to be a W. Let's see if we've got any here. What you'll have is a little W. There's one right here. The W tells me that that is a workgroup computer, not a domain computer. So this column is the operating system, so we can see we're running Windows 7. But more importantly, I can see the version of the operating system. I know whether it's professional, whether it's home, ultimate. I also know if it's 64-bit, because if it's 32-bit, if it's it doesn't say anything. The 64-bits all have the X64 in there. And I even know the build and the service pack that are assigned to those particular machines. So I could look at this client and say, hey, why isn't Service Pack 1 installed on a couple of these computers? If I keep scrolling over, we can see the RAM. If you have a customer that might have um, be complaining that their machine is running rather slowly, you can check their RAM. And if they only have, say, a gigabyte of RAM for a, for a uh, Windows 7 machine or 512k of RAM in a Windows XP machine, that would be a pretty good indication of why their machine is running slowly. I can see the manufacturer of the machine, and I can also identify notebooks, desktops, even if we look at the um, servers, I, uh, it'll tell us if it's a rack mount. And again, this information only, uh, it comes from the manufacturer, so it's got to be programmed in by the manufacturer. It's, it's obviously the, the system can't uh, take a picture of it and see exactly what it is. And then we have connection gateways, which help me to determine where people are located. And if I do need to have the last check-in time, it's located over there on the right-hand side. And that's good for the machines, like when we were talking about earlier, the machines that were offline. I can go in there and see, hey, wait a minute, you know, how long has that machine been offline? Maybe I need to delete it. It's been, you know, it's been uh, decommissioned. So when you get a few minutes, uh, go in there and, and set this up the way you want it, sort things the way you want it. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about Kaseya. It's very customizable. Again, remember, this is the Agent tab in the Agent menu. And if you'd like to set that as your permanent landing zone, go over to the System tab, go to your Preferences, and in this drop-down box here, Set First Function After Login, make sure it says Agent, Agent Status.